I am Elijah Lorraine Mijares and I am here to make a movie review about The Last Emperor. The movie is about Puyi, the last emperor of China, before China became a republic. It tells a story on how he started out as a young emperor until he was forced to leave the Forbidden City and then how he became a prisoner and finally a normal citizen. It so, starts with Pui arriving in the Fushun prison. With this part can be quite confusing since the scene shows China already as a republic and not really the imperial environment yet you expect to see in a movie about an emperor. Though it may be a bit confusing, but I think it was a good idea to start with a suicide attempt and then suddenly that man claims to be the emperor for 10,000 years. Something extreme for suspense that can get the audience more interested to continue watching like and ask some questions like why did he do that and more of who is that man and other questions that will lead to the story then it starts a flashback when Puyi was young and then how he became an emperor in this part the conversation between young Puyi and the empress the wager we learn a few things about the forbidden city like how men are not allowed inside the Forbidden City after dark except for the Emperor and that eunuchs are not real men. During Puyi's coronation and most parts of the movie, we can see a lot of colors gold, red, and yellow. These colors, like yellow, is said to be the color for the Emperor and it's a color for only the Emperor to wear. These colors red and yellow are even on the flag of China. In this part, is where the cricket of a palace official was kotowing to Puyi. Apparently, the word kotowing means to kneel and touch the ground with the forehead and in worship or submission. The movie goes back and forth between the past and the present, where you can identify the differences of time based on the color, like how the flashbacks have warmer tones and the present time had more blues and grays or colder tones. But some flashbacks could get quite messed up since there are flashbacks that contain an another flashbacks in those flashbacks. <laughs> in the movie, we learn about uh, the imperial Chinese customs or traditions like the arranged marriage and having one wife and one concert and how the wives of the past emperors are referred to as high concerts and they still live in the forbidden city even after the the, the late emperors have passed also we also learned that people are not allowed to look at the emperor since the emperor is a symbol of great importance the movie also tells us about the war between Japan and China involving Manchuria or Manchukuo and we find about we find out about opium an addictive drug that that its making was used to finance war. The story or the cinematography showcases a few parallels like for example when Armo, his wet nurse, left, and Wan Jung, his wife, also left. Um, those t those two times, those people left. Puyi both tried to chase them, but he was both too late. And it was also quite similar when Johnston made his entrance in the back seat of a car and having a conversation. Also, when he made his exit, having a conversation with Puyi, also in the back in the back seat of a car, and. How his prison camp commander, who he looked up to, who had a high position, was accused of crimes just like Puyi himself, who did a lot of reformations in the palace and was an emperor. He was imprisoned and identified as a criminal with very, very huge crimes. For camera techniques, cinematography did good and captured the emotion of each scene using different shots for appropriate themes. Using a wide shot to show the setting and the happenings in the scene and close-ups for more dramatic effects or to show more detail. 
Um, the movie's ending left many questions. With the scene of the cricket, the kid, and the forbidden palace and his throne. Did Puyi just suddenly disappear? Did he die? Did he become the cricket? Or was he the cricket? Or was he a ghost that time? And it's up to the audience to interpret. And in my understanding, it was very symbolic. Like the cricket represents Puyi. It was in the cage for such a long time, and like Puyi, he was um, caged or imprisoned, not just literally in jail, but even in his own palace, being a puppet leader in a puppet state. He was also finally set free, living, living in a normal life. The movie told about a lot of social issues, like war, drugs, power, influence, government but for me it focuses on Puyi not just him being an emperor being a great emperor being the last emperor not just that but also his growth from being new to the palace and getting so used to it and then being forced to leave that place and not to mention that he left his home twice he left Manchuria and he left the Forbidden City and was both forced to do that. And he then became desperate to gain that power back. He became desperate to be emperor again. And all throughout, he kept losing important people to his life, like his real mother, his foster mother or his wet nurse, his friend that, or his tutor that was his friend, his second wife, his wife, and even his own city, his own country, and when he was imprisoned, we can see his character development from being prideful and still feeling powerful, still feeling like an emperor, to finally admitting his mistakes and learning to accept his punishment and served his time until he was finally set free for ser after serving 10 years. But in the end, when he visited the Forbidden City, it still shows his fondness of his past being an emperor, and but only admiring it as a very happy, very nostalgic past memory. And finally, accepting his state as a as a normal citizen, and until he finally died. Again, I am Elijah Larry Miharis, and I hope you all learned something about this movie, whether it was um, about China or about Pui himself, or even learning characters to apply to ourselves. And that's all for this review, and thank you.